There are things I cannot bring myself to write about. There's half a roach clip in the ashtray, a ribbon of smoke streaming from its orange cherry, casting a dancing shadow on the bedroom wall, an unfinished painting sitting on my lap, unfinished poems Doppler affecting like speeding ambulances through my mind, pink strips of chicken grilling on the stove. There's an old song about receiving shelter from the storm, whispering from the corner of the room. The window shades are down. Dust swims in the air around them. The sun is bursting through at every crack. It is rolls of fat spilling out of latex. It is being wasteful with its shine again. I held a woman in my arms last week, last month, last century. The sun intruded upon the tranquility of our slumber, shone through and reminded us about the whole rest of the world. We winced and left our maybes on the welcome mat. My framed picture of you at eight months is following me with your eyes again. I kissed it and let, and let the dust settle on my lips. I could taste how long it's been. The chicken is burning on the stove already, just like the chicken is burning on the stove already. The smoke alarm is screaming, just like you did that day when I was tickling you and you fell off the edge of the bed. I, I flipped each chicken strip to the other side, fanned the air with a stained dish rag till the screaming stopped. The screaming is gonna stop. The screaming is beginning to stop. I knew it would if I didn't muffle the sentiment out of it. If I let it run its course. I'm experiencing deja vu regarding this one time when I experienced deja vu, reminding me of how all my trains of thought end up at your station. Your hair has changed. The sun has stained it. Your eyes are still portals, though. They took me right back to that day, almost three years ago, when I held you up amongst the trees, perched on the stability of my right shoulder, strolling through Brooklyn Botanical Garden, reaching for the flurry of floating pollen that danced in the sunlight, that, that spilled through the tree leaves. I know your mother and I are planets with different orbits, but we're both warmed by the same you. I know it feels like it isn't fair, but fairness is a shadow dependent upon where you choose to shine your light. See, that day, my heartbeat was a nervous finger tap, and, and you squeezed my hand tighter in thanks of that, and you picked all the olives off your vegan pizza. <laughs> Ate them one by one, like they were the best fucking part of it, your eyes darting and returning back to me, and I watched you, I watched you as the sunlight illuminated the outside of your curls, and I wonder how I'd ever, for the life of me, for, for the life of you, for the life of, uh, of us, begin to explain all of this to you. We walked and saw a statue of Gandhi in Union Square, and I held you on my right shoulder again, and we rocked to the rhythm of the Hare Krishnas. And I tried to explain what it means when the world adores somebody so much that they've moved, that they're moved to build a statue to immortalize their existence on this planet. See, there's a statue of you in my mind, and I haven't been watering it lately. See, the garden I built it in, I, I haven't finished engraving the plaque yet. I was worried I'd never ever see you again. And there are things that I couldn't bring myself to write about. But the moment that I saw you again, bopping like an epic little poem, I could still see the stanza that I'd written into you two years earlier. You had it engraved into the subtle shifting of your eyebrows. There is something so holy about the way you exaggerate the intensity of your wide-eyed stare, about how you crumbled into my embrace, how you spilled in through my window shades. Give my regards to your mother, please. Tell her thank you for sharing the warmth that's generated by your life. Thank you. Thank you.